I think he's doing great. This guy have experience. I don't care what he said. This guy <laughs> been cooking for a while. And the guests have been waiting for a while, remember? So to get them a bite to eat before dinner, Chef Jarfi takes on the tomatoes. I'm trying to make a little mix to stuff this little tomatoes with it here to do a little appetizer. Jarfi slices off the top of the tomato and then gets the seeds out to form a tomato cup deep enough to hold this. Ah, oh, the smell of fresh dead. You can smell that through the camera. People can smell that at home. The tomato stuffing consists of three basic ingredients, sour cream, cheese, and fresh dill. I'm gonna give it a little more sour cream here because the blue cheese usually is very strong, so we're cutting it down with sour cream. It's almost like a Benedictine, but with blue cheese. I'm gonna give it a little pepper. A teaspoonful goes into each tomato, which is then topped with a fresh sprig of dill. A little uh, plum tomato stuffed with a blue cheese, sour cream, and fresh dill. Thank you. It's not too salty, not too, just, just enough. Gracias, Gracias, senor. While the guests finally get to savor their first bite, we're going to take a quick break, because when we come back, it's crunch time. I got a great sous chef here. 7.15, the goal is in about 8 o'clock, 8.10, this dinner is served. That's a tall order, but one we're sure Chef Jarfi can fill. Plus, a glimpse out to the back deck drives this dinner menu in a whole new direction. Well, I don't know if you had shuttered that or not. I mean, look at that. That, that thing looked like a Mercedes. I can drive that thing down the freeway. Look how beautiful that is. Stick around for the ride when Louisville at Home comes right back. Hello and welcome back to Louisville at Home. This time on the show, we're heading up I-65 North to our neighbors in Memphis, Indiana. And trust me, the trip across the Ohio is well worth it. We got a late start, so the greatest challenge facing our expert chef, Jeff Jarfee, is pulling off a gourmet dinner party menu in record time with an audience. They're freaking me out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good, we're good. You know what they say about the heat in the kitchen, and right now, Chef Jarfee isn't even breaking a sweat, even though he's changing the menu with time running out. We switch uh, direction here a little bit. As you know, we inherited that bacon that came wrapped with the beef tenderloin. We're going to chop it real good and we're gonna add it to our peppers and onions. Bacon with pepper and onions, they go good together. While Gary slices the bacon to go into the sauteed oh. onions and peppers, Jarby concentrates on the grouper. I'm uh, making a little seasoned flour to dust with the grouper before we sear it. At the same time, I'm working on the sauce for the grouper. As you can see right now, I have tomato and garlic in there. Have a little, you have some kind of cheap white wine for cooking? It's not cheap, but it's good. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> yeah. We got Jeff's white wine. It's good at anything. Before the wine with that impressive label goes into the sauce, Jarfy adds fresh basil. Then... And he happened to have uh, the best wine in town. <laughs> Jarfy Chardonnay made for us by Rutherford Winery in Napa Valley. And we're proud to have it. Good wine. I'm going to put a little bit there, about a cup and a half of wine there. It's going to reduce, so. Next into the sauce, thin slices of lemon. I'm going to put a little lemon there. If you have preserved lemon, use preserved lemon. The sauce is left to simmer, the green beans are steaming, and the grouper is dusted with seasoned flour and headed for the frying pan. We want it nice and crispy on the bottom. This is almost like pan fry. And very gently, we're gonna let it go down there. See, we want that mahogany look. Actually, I need to let it go a little bit longer. I'm gonna let the other pieces go a little bit longer. Then we're gonna flip it. That's what we're looking for right there. Nice and crispy. It's pan fried. Jarpy will finish the seared fish in the oven a bit later. For now, it's back to the sauce. 
it cut down on the acidity of lemon a little bit. It's not as uh, lemony as it was when you tried it before. Try now. It looks delicious. I could eat it just like it is. <laughs> so tomorrow, not just they're not gonna have nothing left in their cooler and refrigerator <laughs> house. They can even have coffee because we <laughs> use the cream. <laughs> that might not be so funny when tomorrow comes, but for now, the only thing Gary and his guests are thinking about is dinner. All right, I'm coming to use this uh, Mercedes of grills. Look at this thing. I can ride this thing down 65 going to Louisville. Look at that thing. You put a motor on this thing, I will ride it down there. Oh my God, that's what you call a grill. That's what you call a grill. The steaks, marinated in olive oil, rosemary, and garlic, go right onto the hot grill. That's perfect. That's good stuff. This stuff is, is, is beautiful. I mean, the garlic and rosemary, how can you go wrong? So why get rid of it? Put it on top of the beef. Beef is what's for dinner. <laughs> Chef Jarpy adds a little fresh black pepper, and he gets ready to take the steaks off the heat just that fast. I'm actually going to take it out of the heat completely, let it rest, and come back to room temperature, then maybe six to seven minutes before they're ready to eat. Then I'm going to put it in 350 degree oven approximately for eight to nine minutes. It's all about timing. If we were ready to eat right now when vegetables and everything else is done, just stay by the grill, finish it in grill and all that. If you're trying to buy time, mark your beef on the grill or your chicken or your fish, finish it in the oven. It's not going to change much your taste because you already got that charcoal taste when, you, when, when you're marking it in the grill. Back inside, Gary's finished searing that fish just like a pro. So Tinnaman here is... Uh, I don't think he have to do anything with plumbing. I think he's a chef. He's just not telling nobody that. With the cream sauce that will go over the fish simmering away, it's time now to finish those twice-baked potatoes. This is something, you know, we've never done before. We just uh, started working. We, we inherited the bacon from the beef tenderloin. We sauteed the red peppers and red and the green peppers and, and the red onions to go on, uh, on the vegetables. Then all of a sudden, we see we're going to do like this. Look at that. Now we're talking. Need that grease of the bacon to give it the flavor. I'm impressed. It looks good. To glue the twice baked stuffed potatoes together, Chef Jarpy adds mozzarella cheese right on top. Then it's right back into the oven. And we're going to be ready to eat soon here. The dinner is finally taking shape but there's still no salad course or dessert. Not to worry, Jeff and Gary are coming up with new recipes as we speak. Jeff and Gary's uh, Lemon de Jean. That's it. <laughs> That's like a name of a little uh, barbecue place, you know? <laughs> Je Jeff and Gary. Memphis, hey, we're in Memphis. Jeff and Gary Bar and Grill. More cooking is coming up. Plus, the dinner guests dish about what they've learned from our master chef at home. I learned that I should stay out of the kitchen. <laughs> Louisville at Home with Chef Jarfee will be right back.